That's, yes. I don't. I don't feel like I have on anything. You don't need anything else. That's... <laughs> He's going to do my makeup one day. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> we can get the topic started. I mean, get it started. Do you have, first of all, do you have anything to say, honey? Hi guys, it's Melissa Q again, and I have a special guest. <laughs> Hello. It's my husband, my hubby, Forrest. <laughs> Why are you betting your eyes? Something in my eye. I have something in your eye. So, you know, I did the video on how to deal with depression during the holidays, during depression and death during the holidays. And, um, Thank you so much for you guys that responded and um, I'm glad that you all know that you're not alone in what we were dealing with um, and the death of our daughter. I know we talk about, um, I heard a minister say this, we were at my grandmother's funeral and I thought that this was really profound and it kept me, um, it maybe actually get, give me a new perspective on dealing with death. And he said that a person is only lost when you can't find them. And, you know, if you know that your grandmother is resting or, you know, our daughter is, you know, in heaven, then you know where they are. So that made me, that gave me a good, a good idea. I don't think I have any lip gloss on. Yeah, fine. Yours is fine. Hold on just a second. Pretty much, uh, I concur with uh, Melissa, you know, dealing with uh, grief and the concept of it. <clears throat> Me personally, uh, like I told her earlier, I know how to speak on it. It's just that, you know, sometimes, especially when you have a personal experience dealing with grief, um, you know, it, it still wears... And, and, and tears on you so uh, especially during the holidays but throughout the year uh, it can be definitely uh, difficult one of the things I was uh, thinking about with grief is that we have to stop putting time limits and uh, time constraints mm -hmm. on the process of grieving uh, we understand that you're grieving give it about a couple of months you'll be all right it's been a, a year you need to get over it uh, that's one of the, the no-nos to tell someone. Uh, you can never get over grief. Uh, let me explain myself. Uh, getting over grief is basically saying to uh, eliminate the memories, to eliminate the relationships or relationship, uh, the connection, the emotions uh, with those connections, with those relationships, erasing that out of your mind, and that's not good. It's not about getting over, it's about adjusting, it's about adapting. Mm -hmm. It's also about embracing healing. Mm -hmm. Healing is the most important factor in dealing with grief. And some people, for some people it takes a little longer than others. But once you embrace it, once you allow God to um, uh, reconnect your heart and your emotions back to normal, back to a um, you know, a mindset that you could move forward in life, you will benefit greatly. It doesn't matter how long the person has been deceased, you're going to continue to remember that person. And so I think it's very imperative for a lot of people to watch out what we say in that process. For me, I heal quickly, but I still hurt. My healing process might be totally different from my wife's healing process and I have to respect her healing process. For me, as a man, uh, as an individual, laughter helps me heal. So uh, I've laughed at funerals. Forrest, that's inappropriate, how dare you? No, I I've laughed at funerals because sometimes we do crazy things at funerals. 
<laughs> I've seen some crazy stuff <laughs> at funerals that if, if the person in the casket knew this was going on, he or she would be definitely upset and devastated. Well, hopefully they don't come out of the casket. Well, that's a whole different story. That's why I told my wife that, God forbid, if I pass away, oh, I want to be petrified. <laughs> I want to be petrified. I want to be basically a wax figure with my eyes open, pointing my finger <laughs> at no. folks. So if you do something silly, you say something silly, you know what? Force is going to get you because I'm going to be looking like this. I can't believe you just did that. You knocked over my casket. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're acting up. You haven't spoken to me in a whole year, and you're the main one crying, <laughs> lying. Okay, but uh, back to what we were saying. I, I just feel that it's definitely a day-by-day uh, -day process. Mm -hmm. And if you saturate yourself around people who have love in their hearts, if you do uh, more for others, uh, that's part of the healing process. I think yeah. healing is very uh, important. So I just wanted to say that. I can speak a little more about it, but, you know, I'm going to let Melissa chime in on that. What do you think... Um <clears throat> What do you think helped us get through the death? Not only that death, but you know, I don't know if you all knew this, but um, I, you probably did. I, I think I talked about this. I've been pregnant five times. And out of those five, um, there's been two, what we say, two deaths and a miscarriage. I don't even know if I can, well, because Joseph was a twin. I don't know if you all know knew that either. I don't think I've shared that, but Joseph was a twin. So one passed and the other survived, which was Joseph. So, but actually breathing in our arms was Brooklyn. So they know the name of the, the baby, but. Brooklyn, uh, Elise, uh, she uh, stayed alive for three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I gave her um, CPR keep her going and uh so we she we actually saw brooklyn brooklyn was in our arms beautiful brown baby like a beautiful brown skin like she Bronze. to me she looked she looked like him so you know she was gorgeous <laughs> no, no she she was she was beautiful she had a head full of hair yeah like she, oh my goodness yeah. it was just like and the great thing i think um well i wanted to ask you that question like what do you think got us through like the grieving process because it was hard <clears throat> enough like coming home with no baby and different things like that and i finally can talk about it because before for months first of all let me say for for four months and forrest can tell you this I could not go in her nursery. There was no way. I mean, by the way, you, you know that like we had a nursery, we had everything. So what do you think like got us through the grieving process? And how do you, okay, so what you think got us through the grieving process? And then how do you think as a man, you all grieve different? How do you think you grieve differently than women? Cause I think that's that's why we're doing this video is to kind of like shed light on both sides of grieving. Cause I can grieve by carrying the baby, but my husband had just as much of an attachment, even more so. I feel like because she looked a lot like him, and then you know, I don't know. I just want to get your thoughts on that. Um, I, I think that the first thing for me is God. Mm -hmm. uh, whether people believe in him or they don't, uh, definitely we do. And um, the reason why I say that it was God is because you have to have a great supernatural power to be able to heal um, your heart emotionally, physically. You know, it takes a lot out of you physically, emotionally, mentally. And it was only God that can do that. I can't change Melissa's emotions and she can't change my emotions. Uh, it's definitely a one-on-one -on -one remake in the process of healing. And so uh, definitely God was the focal point in this situation and all the situations, but especially this one. The other thing was what helped me get through it was understanding uh, my wife and understanding that this is a challenge and to continue to ask God for strength and patience in uh, grieving with her. 
the the fallacy is that only women grieve in the case of losing uh, a child or children. Mm-mm. That's not true at all, folks. Men grieve too. And sometimes we're underestimated in how we grieve. You know, you got to be tough. You got to be macho. You got to be hardcore. Not necessarily. And really, you know, men are, are, are built mentally to, to endure certain things. But death is death. It hurts like it hurts y'all. Now, definitely you all carry the child. But we helped you. I'm talking about the good men, responsible men. Uh, we helped you throughout that process. Mm-hmm. And it's a part of us. It's a shared uh, uh, investment, mm-hmm. the child. I know with me, uh, the way I grieve is that I'm a, I'm a mild-mannered person, so I try to stay in the middle emotionally. Because if I go too excited and I get disappointed, it brings me all the way down. If I'm too disappointed, then now you're going through depression. So I have to stay in the middle because somebody else might need my my help emotionally. And uh, what kept me focused during that time was working through it. Not just working physical hours, mm. but working through it. You talked a lot. You know, we talked about it. Mm. Uh, I, I, I spent a lot of uh, uh, time with my wife, you know, going out, hanging out, talking, um, going shopping, going to the movies, enjoying her, helping her realize that she's, it's not her fault. You know, sometimes we, we start to play the, uh, the blame game. You know, it's your fault. This is all because of you or, you know, it's my fault. And, and, and that's not the case. Mm-hmm. Life and death is in God's hands. I'm g- really glad that you didn't do that. Because that's the first thing that I thought was that it was my fault. Because I carried her, I should have known the signs. I should have known um, what was going on. Because uh, it happened so fast. He he had actually been working a double. He were, he was working a double. So he had gone off one shift and went on another shift. And then had, from the job, they called him. No, I'm glad. He, he never blamed me for what happened. And I think really, I think with with you you would he would come and check on me that see now he's trying to make me like cry or whatever but i ain't gonna do it (laughs) my makeup i got my makeup on i can't he's always been uh and this was even before brooklyn like very attentive to like what i'm feeling like how you feeling today if i seem like i'm okay and i may not say that i'm okay he was still like for real like ask me like for real like what's wrong like what's going on like ask me like how my day is and hey i'm calling it check on you just checking in just to see how you feel throughout the day he still you know he still does that so i think you not blaming me really helped you can't blame each other and that's one of the things that i had to really look at within me is to not you know, say that well, I carried the child, he should only be attentive to me. I was constantly like checking in with him because because men grieve differently. And uh, to me, they grieve in silence more so than we do. You know, mm-hmm. I'm the one I'm the I don't want to say emotional. I feel like God wired me like that because I'm a woman. But I'm the one that's like, oh, oh <laughs> you know, crying and stuff. And um, he cried. But I feel like his was more of a silent grievance. Okay, can I chime in on that? Yeah. Whether it's uh, out loud or uh, silence or whatever you want to call it, as long as you're purging yourself, mm-hmm. um, really, to be honest with you, is is good to get it out verbally. Mm-hmm. Get it out, you know, respectfully though. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you gotta get a little mad, get a little loud cry get it out respectfully when i mean respectfully i mean that it's good to get that um anxiety out of you just don't you know lose it to the point of you're going too far out of bounds but it's okay to verbalize it Mm -hmm. uh, respectfully because people need to know that you're hurting you know sometimes we like to cover it up by saying i'm okay i'm good you know Mm -hmm. i'm straight i'm good but if you're not good you know it's, it's basically 
prolonging the healing process. Plus, I, th- I feel like like you're not only lying to the other person, but you're lying to yourself. And that's one of the things that I actually realized when he would ask me, are you okay? He was really asking me. It wasn't for just to be out of formality of just saying, are you okay? Like he really wanted to know. So I felt like, you know what? I have to be fair to myself and to him and say, no. And then then that would open up the conversation of like, okay, so how are you feeling right now? Because there are different stages of grieving. Sometimes you're going to be angry. Sometimes there's a depression. And I feel like it's, it was good because sometimes maybe he didn't want to get out of bed. I mean, that's just one of the things that really happens. And then there were other times that I didn't want to get out of the bed. He'd be like, come on, baby, we got to get up. Or right, we, we got to go. Let's go somewhere, you know. See, I know with me, um, I was very stressed because she was um, pretty much sedated when a lot of this was going on. And so just imagine, you know, your wife is giving, um, well, she, she's in labor and the baby is on its way out. And then you're given a death certificate while she's having her contractions. You know, I need you to sign the death certificate. What, you know, what are we talking about? And this is all in this process. Yeah. You know, we didn't know anything about what was about to happen. We just knew that, okay, she's coming out prematurely, but, you know, there, there's ways to remedy that situation, mm-hmm. as we thought. And so it definitely was uh, something traumatic that uh, would always be a part of our lives. But what I wanted to say to encourage those who have been through something similar to that is that where there is life, there is hope. Mm-hmm. And I'm encouraged by that because, in other words, um, yes, it, it appears to be a loss. And technically, it's a loss mm-hmm. because the life that was once there is no longer there. Mm-hmm. But I like to look at I like to look at it as a um, it, it's delayed. Mm-hmm. It's delayed. It's a delayed blessing. Mm-hmm. You don't know what could have happened uh, if that child was, you know, fully birthed into the world we don't know it's an it's the inevitable we don't know we're praying for the best but we don't know but god has his way of uh, allowing things to happen for our good and so even though it hurt but i was content with the fact that where there's life uh there is hope Mm -hmm. and so sometimes you feel like man you know this happened in 04 and then it happened again in 08 you know, is it going to continue to be like this? And that's where your faith has to uh, kick in. And so with uh, in the process of the waiting period, you have to continue to stay positive. You have to continue to part of my healing and our healing together collectively was helping others. Mm-hmm. Giving back, that's a big thing. you know, giving back to people who <laughs> didn't have and and spending our time around uh, life mm-hmm. and um, pretty much inhaling life you know Mm -hmm. uh something that made us feel good we started to i said baby you know what it's time to paint again i was just about to say that i was just about to say that and i i think like when i say i could not go into the nursery i had to like avoid like even walking by the room because that was like the place that i prayed that was the place i'm not gonna cry that was the place that I, I, I cried, I, I prayed, and it was the place that we had, you know, we, we were talking about building our family. And two things. One of the things that I remember um, Forrest telling me was that, you know, a family is not when you have a baby. We're a family. And it made me think about, you know, because sometimes, especially with women, you know, a part of our womanhood is the ability to have this miracle inside of us and birth children. I mean, that's a miracle in itself. And that's a part of motherhood. And I don't, you know, some most women want that. I don't, you know, some women don't, which is fine. I was one that did want children and I wanted them to look like us, you know. But the thing that I remember, a part of my healing process was that, you know, when you have somebody that's in your corner that loves you and knows when it's time, 
he didn't do it too soon. You know, he didn't do it like, you know, too late. But he was like, you know what? Let's paint the, let, you know, a fresh, what do you call it? A fresh coat of paint. A fresh coat of paint meant like, let's, let's do this again. Like, don't let us stop at, you know, and leave this room empty. It's time to like try again and let's fill the room with love because that became our son's nursery. Mm -hmm. But it was his. It mm -hmm. wasn't. He was not in the shadow mm -hmm. of the ch of the child that we had lost. And I I really um, I appreciate you for that because I was just about to say that is that you um, a part of the healing process is knowing when it's time to like help the other spouse forward and saying, you know, let's let's try this again and let's do this again. There were so many things that my husband did that were amazing. He got us away. Uh I didn't even know he was gonna do this. He got us away out of um California the year that she passed away and, and it was around actually around Thanksgiving time that I was supposed to give birth to her and he was like, mm mm we're not staying here. Let's go. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, I don't want to say it was, it wasn't up for discussion. It's just that he knew like this, we need to be out of this atmosphere. And I know you guys talked about, um, that being a great thing to do, but there will be a time. I feel like there'll be a time where it's almost like you make peace with yourself. You make peace with God. You make peace with the fact that this is something I'm moving forward. Um, I don't know. Did you want to say anything like um, about, about? I'm not that? trying to be too like deep or intellectual or philo uh, philosophical when I say this, but uh, I'm learning um, that pain is good at times in a person's life. What are you talking about, Forrest? Pain is good. I, I, uh, you know, when you have pain, it lets you know that you're uh, still human. Alive and breathing. Unless you know that you that that, that you can still feel, um, and don't misinterpret. I don't enjoy pain, but actually, pain makes you stronger mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of areas because sometimes, even though um, pain is something that nobody enjoys, but sometimes pain keeps you motivated to move forward, to keep going. You know, I, I'm aching inside. You know, I don't feel my best, but I can't stop because if I stop, I will die. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't want to take a chill pill. I don't want to be on ice. I don't want to, you know, just, no, I got to keep moving, even with pain. Because, mm -hmm. see, what happens is, is that life has ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But if you don't stop moving or if you stop moving, then you'll never continue to see what, what else is out there, you know, and uh, you have to just, you have to uh, walk by faith and you have to continue to believe that it's going to get better. No matter the, the circumstances around you, it's going to get better, but I can't give up. My wife that I love very dearly, she is not a quitter. Sometimes life and tragedy and uh, persecutions in life and things that are just not going your way will make you quit. But you have to re remember that if I quit on myself, then something that is supposed to come out of me great won't come out of me. Whether it's children, whether it's uh, a an invention, an idea, a thought, a seed that's sown into somebody else. So you have to always remember that we're not living for ourselves. We're living for each other and other people. And so if we are defeated, then how can we encourage somebody else uh, to have victory? So that's why, um, you know, I said we got to get through this. Uh, not, not forgetting what just happened, but we got to get through it. And we got to continue to bless God. We got to continue to be nice to one another. We got to continue to make love to one another um, in all areas. You know, like sometimes you just, you know, you, you go, you go numb. It's not because you know you're doing it on purpose. It's just that you go numb. You don't feel like saying hello. Hey. Good morning. Hey. 
<laughs> how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Hug me. Yeah. <laughs> you know how we get guys. You know, sometimes we, you know, you know, we 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 get the the, the women in our lives they want to hug us and we just kind of like eh, you know eh. <sighs> but i'm telling you that's part of the healing process when you give that hug back and you you know you you kind of you know take your time and that's how you get strength but well, you tell me about that like uh, about like touching like it, like um Touching just okay. Hold on, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, like, I'm still human now. Don't touch me. You know, no, it's just like <laughs> no, like <laughs> touching, oh, like. Oh, 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 but they get it. <laughs> I, no, I, like I, I got it too. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, you guys. This is just part one. I decided to break it up into two parts. So yeah, I'll see you guys in part two.